This video today is going to be very news oriented. We're going to talk about the rise and fall of Vice Media. It was a once rebellious force in the media industry, and now it finds itself in, well, bankruptcy with a potential sale for a fraction of its former valuation. I mean, we're talking about a massive collapse. And we're covering this today because there's a lot of sobering lessons to be learned from Vice's downfall. It's important to examine those factors that led to its demise and the broader implications for the entire media landscape, because honestly, this is affecting all of them almost exactly the same way. Now, now, the obligatory dad joke. Vice is a cautionary tale of rebels. I mean, who knew that sticking it to the man required a spreadsheet? A joke. <laughs> That's a terrible joke. That was a good. Here we go. Once upon a time, Vice Media stood as a symbol of subversion and counterculture. There were a lot of influential people who got their start there. They took the fight the power narrative to the extreme, and they investigated the establishment very, very seriously. And they called it out for the things that it was doing wrong. In the early aughts, it actually embodied the spirit of defiance, challenging the very establishment that they were attacking. And they took a very pr provocative and creative approach that that had them standing out alone in a sea of same. It was led by an audacious group of North Americans, and Vice seemed to have cracked the code on how to launch a successful media venture. The group of them did rather well, and that ultimately led to their downfall. You see, the company had stumbled upon something that was going to only be available for a limited time a freemium print magazine. That was coupled, of course, with its digital presence, and that formed a powerful model for others to follow. Well, many, many media companies patterned themselves in the way of Vice and vice versa. Vice versa. Anyway, it expanded into wide-reaching realms that included a music label, a, an ad agency, which <laughs> that's convenient, and a production studio where they could do audiovisual content. And Vice's growth felt completely organic, a natural evolution of its boundary pushing ethos, which again is oftentimes how great things begin. And then it wasn't. Vice's downfall can actually be traced back to a pivotal moment when it made a fateful decision. One, to sell out. Greed and the pursuit of profit at any cost replaced the company's once rebellious spirit. You sold your soul to Satan. It became a victim of its own success, succumbing to the pressures and pitfalls of the corporate world. You greedy, greedy pig. The venture capital started to really drive decision making and really lean the company into, well, agenda driven narratives. And to make our point, Vice's story is actually emblematic of the broader challenges faced by media companies from the 2010s through today. It's an era of market triumphs, market groupthink, and misguided financial bets that Vice and its peers like BuzzFeed epitomized for the blind spots that they had in their corporate leadership. Billions upon billions of dollars were squandered on ill-conceived ventures while pressing social issues were conveniently ignored in favor of radical agenda-driven coverage at every level. In the course of researching this particular story, I found that Variety had recently resurrected an incisive article by Michael Wolf. It exposed how uh, Vice co-founder Shane Smith utilized his ability to market his brand to middle-aged media executives. That skill propelled Vice's meteoric growth. Then, very ironically, that same skill ultimately contributed to the company's downfall. Because when the money dried up from the freewheeling venture capital folks, the glad handing vanished as well. For nearly the previous decade's worth of success, Vice's transformation from a countercultural provocateur to a commercialized entity forced essentially the loss of its journalistic integrity and the creative edge that it had along the way. And no trust there anymore. It was so hollowed out, like so many other digital entities that are struggling out there, from exactly the same events that happened, well, to most of these digital media organizations. And look, the lesson here is very, very clear. 
no amount of sturdy journalism and creativity can compensate for flawed strategy and executive hubris, which is basically why we're here today. No amount of charm is going to overcome poor leadership and economic realities, and of course, journalistic principles. Vice's demise right now draws attention to profound journalistic issues more broadly, and they often go unaddressed in the pursuit of profit. There are wide-reaching consequences for placing profit above integrity. This is always the case. There is a detrimental effect in being driven agenda and contributing to the erosion of public discourse. It almost always leads to collapse, and it will happen again. In the end, Vice's fall serves as a stark reminder of the perils of losing sight of one's core values, succumbing to temptations of unchecked growth, profit, power, and propaganda proliferation, well, doesn't end well. But hey, what do you think? Is Vice just one of many digital platforms out there that will collapse over the course of the next couple of years? I, of course, think yes. Will Vice get better or worse under the new Bond villain owner? I would suggest that it will get much, much worse and maybe possibly just disappear altogether. And finally, are there any digital outlets out there that you still trust for honest, truthful, and factual reporting? Because they're few and far between. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below, because A, I'd like to know if there are some sources that I'm not using, and B, I'm curious if you guys are seeing the landscape the same way I am, collapsing. And with that, be sure to take care of yourself, take care of others, wash your hands, of course, because it's good hygiene. And until next time, bye.